Hey viewers, it's time to put the guns away for a change and examine some player homes. Don't worry, this will be exciting, I promise. I'm reviewing 10 mods today. I tried to focus on homes that are fully furnished rather than empty structures that serve as workshop areas, which I'm not very interested in. I want a house, dammit, not the opportunity to build one myself. I also tried to focus on more obscure mods, hoping to find some hidden gems on the Nexus. Of the mods I looked at, the best was definitely Pine Needle Rest. It's a beautiful, functional home away from the Commonwealth. It's basically perfect. Second best would have to be Chestnut Lodge. It's a gorgeous little house located close to the center of the map with just about everything you might need. The other mods on this list are of varying quality, and while I certainly wouldn't use them, maybe you'll find some of them to your liking, so let's take a closer look. First up, we've got Cyberlight Apartments. Located on the outskirts of southeastern Boston, this new building looks impressive from the outside. The lobby is connected to the Commonwealth world space, but the apartments themselves are after an elevator loading screen. There's two apartments, and to access either, you'll need to purchase keys from the non-voiced character Cass. The keys are quite pricey, and I like that. It gives you something to spend your caps on. Through the elevator and to the right is a room with all of Fallout 4's crafting workbenches and even a power armor station. Everything's here except for Automatron's robot workbench. And every workbench is connected to the rest, which is something you can't take for granted. There's some unusable doors to the left of the elevator, and to the center are the two apartments you can buy, apartments 8 and 9. Both are fully furnished with mostly non-interactive clutter, and each has a usable stove. There are plenty of shelves, cupboards, and closets you can use to store your items, and nearly every room has a working light switch. I must say I'm not a fan of the harsh lighting in this interior. I guess it's necessary for the cyberpunk art style the author was going for, but I really wish I could close the blinds so the light doesn't mess with my eyes. Certain areas can get very dark with Fallout 4's eye adaptation, and according to the Nexus comments, it's even worse with some ENBs although I didn't have time to test that. The windows at least do a great job of showing off Fallout 4's volumetric lighting and shadows, although I'm sure the effect will be ruined if you play without god rays and with a low shadow map resolution. Also, strangely sun and moonlight seem to come from both the north and west, no matter what the time of day is. You can't build in the apartments because there's no workshop, which limits your redecorating possibilities, but that's fine by me. The real killer for this mod is our old enemy, the Precombine. Yes, this mod breaks precombines around where the apartment is placed, and in a low-res CPU limited benchmark test, I noted a 40% loss in performance at the building's exterior. Now, the highway through southeastern Boston isn't the most intensive area in the game, so I was still getting nearly 200 FPS, but for those with weaker CPUs, this drop might be enough to take you below 60 FPS, whereas you would have been comfortably above that before. So overall, I can't recommend this mod, even though it has a lot of good things going for it. Second up, we've got the Moon Palace. The Moon Palace is added to the eastern side of Far Harbor, but you can get there from the Commonwealth by taking a boat added to Spectacle Island, which connects to the underside of the palace through a loading door. The lower levels of the palace feature all of Fallout 4's workbenches except for the robot workbench, chemistry lab, and stove, but annoyingly none of them are linked together, which would make them tough to use in an actual playthrough. Also on the lower levels are a wine cellar and vault, which has a ridiculous amount of gold and silver bars worth several thousand caps. Note that you're given free access to all of this with zero explanation. Through another loading zone, you access the palace itself. I noticed companions can have trouble navigating the narrow staircase between floors, but they eventually figure it out by teleporting to you. The first floor of the palace has a guy that will literally wipe your ass for you, and no, I am not kidding. As well as a hot tub that seems to be frozen over because the water surface is completely solid. There's also a library room with a roaring fireplace. In fact, every room here seems to have a fireplace. The second floor has a chemistry bench along with a shitload of free drugs and a kitchen with a working stove. There's also a bath girl wearing an outfit designed for the CBBE body. If you're not loading Caliente's bountiful bosoms enhancer, her skin will be all messed up because the UVs don't match with the vanilla body. Anyways, you can bathe with her or have sex with her, and both actions restore all your stats, just like having your ass wiped. Also on the same floor you can find Esma, who has a quest I couldn't complete despite spawning in the necessary materials, so I can't really speak as to what she offers. You can get a free British uniform by talking to an admiral here too. None of these characters are voiced by the way, and maybe that's for the best. The top floor houses the servants' quarters, and there's not really anything interesting going on up there, just some beds, some wash basins, and a steam effect that doesn't stick to the ceiling like it should. Outside the manor, if you download an optional patch, you can build and are given effectively unlimited free resources to do so. That's ridiculous. Underneath the palace, there's a locked bunker that I couldn't get inside, so I had to clip through. I think it has something to do with the resources quest from Esma that didn't work for me. 
Inside the bunker is the skeletal corpse of King Henry XI who died here, possibly because he couldn't find anyone to wipe his ass for him. But I'm not sure because the note he left behind is unreadable due to my computer not having the proper font installed. He also left behind an incendiary deliverer pistol called Majesty's Last Stand. That was nice of him. It's just a copy of the deliverer so it has all the same attachments. Like our last mod, this one breaks precombines in cells near the palace, but unlike Cyberlight Apartments, it actually regenerates them with new precombines of its own, so there is no noticeable performance loss from using this mod. However, it apparently can somehow cause script lag, and it has a couple of other issues, so make sure to download the unofficial patch linked in the description if you plan on using it. While it's certainly not fit for a typical playthrough, I'll say I found this mod interesting. I'm sure a lot of work was put into it. It makes me wish I had a palace of my own. Third, we have Billionaire's Vault. The vault is located on the very western edge of the map, but you won't have any trouble finding it since the mod adds a startup quest to the game that tells you exactly where to go. I noticed the quest had a weird delay though, I had to wait a few seconds before it would move on to the next stage, but it doesn't take long to complete regardless. Just go to vault Tech Regional HQ, get the keycard, and go to the Billionaire's Vault. I like how you have to swipe a keycard to get inside. The top of the vault has a lot of free drugs and some vim, as well as an outdoor cooking stove. The exterior acts as a workshop, so you can build whatever your heart desires out here if you're creatively inclined. The interior of the vault is accessed through an elevator, and it is very dark until you press the light buttons. There's a bedroom with a bed, magazine racks, a bobblehead stand, and a terminal that gives you lots of information about your new home. Beside the bedroom is a living room slash kitchen area with a big couch, toggleable fireplace, and a cooking stove. Next, you have a working area with weapon and armor workbenches as well as Automatron's robot workbench. On top of the weapon workbench is a unique combat shotgun called the General Direction, which does something like four times as much damage as a regular combat shotgun. Beside that is a functionally useless generator room, then there's a bathroom with a radiation removing shower, and finally a medical room with a chemistry workbench and a surgery chair to change your appearance. On the bedroom terminal you can enable a panic room function, but I didn't find any panic room while no clipping. Maybe that feature is unimplemented. There's an emergency warning system that works, but no reason to use it. It's wonderful that you can build in the interior of the vault. It counts as a workshop just like the exterior, so go crazy with redecorating if you want. I like this mod quite a lot, but it has a precombine problem. The area surrounding the vault has broken precombines and loses nearly one third of its CPU limited performance. Thankfully, the edge of the map is not very CPU intensive. I'm at nearly 400 FPS even with broken precombines, so realistically, any PC that can handle Fallout 4 won't struggle due to this mistake. If this mod didn't break precombines and its quest was a little less janky, I would have recommended it since it actually is very impressive. Fourth, we've got Fallout Shock Apartment, a mod that looked good in its preview images but turned out to be a real stinker. You can reach the apartment by way of a boat southeast of Harbor Master Hotel or by just swimming there. Whichever way you choose, a quick pod ride will take you down to the Wish.com version of Rapture. Maybe that's being a bit harsh. Honestly, it does look good down here, with great lighting and clever use of pre-existing assets to create the illusion of an underwater environment. But at the end of the day, it's a very tiny apartment with just a few small rooms. The only workbenches you have are a weapons workbench and power armor station, and they aren't linked to each other. At least there's a bed and a privacy curtain that only renders on one side for maximum privacy. But aside from that, there's not many amenities in this apartment. Even some of the containers are set to respawn, which will give you a nasty surprise should you store something important in there. If appearances alone are enough to convince you to download a mod, I would still think twice because Fallout Shock Apartment breaks a lot of things in Fallout 4. First off, the water and the slog becomes invisible whenever you load this plugin. I have no idea why. More importantly, precombines are broken at several key areas, including in Boston. Expect 25% lower frame rates outside Diamond City thanks to this mod, which has no reason to even be editing Diamond City, it's just a mistake. Several interiors also have their precombines broken, but the situation isn't as dire there because those areas weren't exactly intensive to begin with. Considering the broken precombines and lack of useful features, this mod is impossible for me to look favorably towards. Definitely avoid it. Don't avoid this fifth mod, Pine Needle Rest Player Home. I recommended it for good reason. To locate this home, travel southwest of Vault 111 until you hit the edge of the map and find a rowboat. Next to the rowboat, you'll find a dead guy with a lore note. Make sure to loot his backpack for the key to the cabin and a trusty chrome shotgun, which does more damage than a regular double barrel shotgun and has an incendiary effect, but cannot be modified. The chrome texture looks kind of cheap, but whatever. 
The first time you go to Pine Needle Rest, you'll physically sail there on a rowboat that moves by itself, which is pretty cool. It takes you to a little micro world space outside the Commonwealth. My only problem with this outdoor environment is how blurry it is. The extreme depth of field turns the game into a myopia simulator, but that's a nitpick. The main feature of this environment is a small cabin. Outside it, you can find a power armor station, and if you picked up the key earlier, you can enter the cabin, which is chock full of interactivity. There's light switches to flick, curtains to pull back, you can change the wallpaper and flooring, add wood to the fire, do some cooking in here, whatever you want. There's containers to store all your magazines, bobbleheads, hollow tapes, you name it. Back outside the cabin, there's a jacuzzi, weight bench, and a fusion generator that you'll need to power up to access the bunker behind the cabin. You'll also need to interact with the replica shotgun on the wall above the fireplace and find the key to the bunker inside the cabin. There's a lot of key hunting and puzzle solving involved with this mod. You'll be discovering new things for quite a while, which I like. For example, after finding a fuel can, you can refill oil lamps around the place and turn them on or off. It doesn't do anything, but it's a cool bit of interactivity. The atmosphere at Pine Needle Rest is foreboding and dreary. Occasionally you'll even hear air raid sirens coming from a distance. They don't seem to do anything though. The only danger you'll encounter is a pair of legendary wolves that attack when you fast travel here for the third or fourth time. They are pretty tough opponents. There's an incredibly tiny workshop area that only exists to allow you to dismiss your companions to Pine Needle Rest, which is a cool feature. You're not supposed to be able to actually build anything out here, although of course you can use other mods to enable building if you really want to. Anyways, the bunker behind the cabin has all the rest of your workbenches, and thankfully they're all linked together. The bunker also has a firing range, an armory, a panic room, armor stands, and even a fast travel map that makes an excellent fast travel alternative for survival mode. You can only travel to a handful of other rowboats placed on the eastern side of the Commonwealth, so it's not overpowered. This mod is absolutely incredible. Its only tiny blemish is it edits the weapon records for the 44 pistol and deliverer to make them fit in these stupid display cases that can only fit those two weapons and nothing else. So make sure to load any rebalance mods after Pine Needle Rest so their more important changes can overwrite these stupid ones made by this mod. Aside from that one little issue, Pine Needle Rest is basically a perfect player home mod. It's so good that I want to use it myself in future playthroughs. Sixth, we have the bunker. You can find this bunker right behind the player's house in Sanctuary Hills. As soon as you load into it, you'll see my biggest problem with this mod. It gives you all kinds of loot for free. For the taking are various weapons, combat armor, lockers filled to the brim with weapon attachments, it's insane. Among all the free weapons are two unique weapons, the Wanderer Pistol, which is just a 10mm pistol rechambered to 45 that does twice as much damage, and the Speakeasy Combat Shotgun, which is just a combat shotgun that does 50% more damage than normal. Both use vanilla models and are nothing to write home about. Besides that, the bunker has some free food, water, rare Nuka Colas, and even a cola mixing station. All the vanilla game's workbenches can be found here too, except for the robot workbench from Automatron, but sadly none of them are linked together. Considering the close proximity of the bunker to Sanctuary, it would be better to handle your crafting and item storage there instead. There's a bed and terminal on the second floor of the bunker, which shouldn't even exist since the elevation means it should be poking out of the ground, but whatever. The terminal doesn't load hollow tapes, so it's useless. Ultimately, this is a functional mod. I can't say I hate it. The lighting looks fine. You could definitely live in this bunker, but I wouldn't want to since there's better options available. Seventh up, we've got Seaward Shack, Player Home. This is a little house placed in between Nahant Chapel and Nahant Oceanological Society, which is not an ideal location for reaching other parts of the map, but it could serve as a nice home away from home when you are on the eastern side of the Commonwealth. The shack only consists of two rooms, it is tiny and cramped. There's a little kitchen area with a stove, a living area with a TV and radio, and a bathroom. Every room has tons of containers you can use to store your stuff. The chemistry station is behind the shack, and the rest of Fallout 4's workbenches can be found in a little bunker to the side of the shack. There's even a power armor station. All the workbenches are thankfully linked to each other. The bunker has a terminal that plays hollow tapes, conveniently next to a hollow tape container. It also has a shelf that displays all your bobbleheads. Both the shack and bunker are cozy and have a nice warm atmosphere. Most of the clutter you see is non-interactive and there's very little loot in the house, which is not a bad thing. The shack's frosted over windows are a bit disappointing, but thinking back to how ugly the view is out of most vanilla windows, perhaps it's a blessing. The only real problem with this mod is our eternal nemesis. Yes, it's those damn precombines getting broken again. 
Thankfully, only precombines around the shack appear to be broken, and in my tests, performance was only reduced by 15%, which isn't so bad. I was still above 300 FPS, since Nahant isn't a particularly performance-intensive area. I'm surprised this mod has so few downloads. It's a cute little house with some pretty decorations, the only downside being the usual precombined pain. If you're looking for a house in the area, definitely give this a download. Eighth, we have the Aquarium, a mod I'm not too excited about. It's located just southeast of Nordhagen Beach, again, like the last mod, not the most convenient of locations. The entrance to the Aquarium is in this ruined house. The bunker door somehow takes you to a vault door. There's another loading door on the left that takes you into a room with all your workbenches and a power armor station. Sadly, they are not linked together. There is at least workshop access in the Aquarium, and you'll probably want to use it since decoration is sparse in here. The interior feels frugal and plain. The views out the windows are pretty interesting at least. There's a living room, a kitchen with a cooking station, a bedroom, bathroom, and laundry room. Sadly, there's basically no interactivity anywhere. There's no light switches, the terminal in the bedroom is non-functional, and the sink and shower do nothing. The bathtub does give you a good dose of radiation, that's something I suppose. For negatives, this mod lets you grab brain fungus straight through a window, and more annoyingly, the area is separated into two load zones despite the workshop room being in the same cell as the rest of the aquarium. This separation is totally unnecessary. Another flaw is, of course, damn precombines again, although this time around my frame rate was so high around Nordhagen Beach I couldn't actually measure any performance loss. Thus, in any realistic scenario, you're not going to lose enough performance to make the area unplayable. Still, when comparing the aquarium to something similar like Billionaire's Vault, it definitely comes up short, so let's move on. Ninth is my second recommended mod, and a very beautiful one, Chestnut Lodge Player Home. Chestnut Lodge can be found at Chestnut Hillock Reservoir. If the bloatflies around the area bother you, a gun turret on top of the house will take care of them. Beside the house in a little garage area are all your workbenches aside from the stove, and they're all linked together. There's even a power armor station. To the right of the house, tucked away behind a wall, is a little bunker area that acts as a workshop. It's completely unfurnished to begin with, so you have free reign to do whatever you want with this little space. The interior of the home is also a workshop area, but it's already fully decorated. Unless you have mods that let you build without restrictions, you'll find it hard to plop down anything here. On the first floor, there are armor stands, a kitchen with a stove, and a ton of containers you can use for storage. There's also a magic mirror you can use to change your appearance. The second floor has your bedroom with some paintings from the intro FMV, an I Hate Morndas coffee mug, and a terminal that's blue screened. Despite that, it still works and loads hollow tapes just fine. Like Seaward Shack, the windows are frosted over, but that's not so bad. If you like the look of Seaward Shack but want something larger, more detailed, and centrally located, then this is the mod for you. Tenth and finally, we have Scavenger's Nest. Sadly, we're ending this showcase not with a bang, but with a whimper, because this mod is not great. You can find the Scavenger's Nest at Quincy Police Station. It doesn't have its own fast travel marker, but it doesn't need one since it's basically on top of the PD. The unassuming brick exterior holds two doors, only one of which actually works. The interior has a decent amount of loot and many non-interactable objects. The first floor doesn't have any rooms, its major feature is the hanged corpse of the titular scavenger who was killed by gunners, I guess. And this certainly isn't a very pleasant home considering the hanged corpse, knocked over doors, and smashed up walls. Also, the interior doesn't match the exterior because the windows are completely different. The second floor has all the expected workbenches aside from a power armor station. Unfortunately, they aren't linked to each other. There's no workshop access either, so your redecorating options are nil. The top floor has some safes with loot, an ugly dual mattress bed, and some admittedly cool trinkets and toys on the shelves. Even so, I don't find this an appealing mod. You can't even tell what time it is in this interior, the lighting is always the same, and I don't like the distance fog. Beyond my subjective aesthetic complaints, this mod makes some strange edits. Thankfully it doesn't break precombines anywhere, but it does unnecessarily copy multiple vanilla cell and world space records despite not changing anything anywhere except Quincy Police Station. Also, it strangely edits several weapon and armor records, but again, doesn't make any real changes, so I'm not sure why this was done. If you're going to use this mod, make sure to load any rebalance mods after it so these pointless duplicate records can be overwritten. I don't have much else to say about Scavenger's Nest, so I'll leave it there. In fact, that'll be it for today. I hope you found this video useful. 
Maybe I'll review some more house mods in the future, but until then, toodles!